going to take just another two or three minutes here. We're going to talk about another passage of hell. We're going to start with another Gary Larson cartoon, of course. This is my favorite one of all, maybe. Shows, uh, shows Charlie Parker, the great saxophonist, jazz saxophonist, in a recording studio. And he's screaming to beat the band. Uh, pun intended, Brian. And uh, one of the demons is in the uh, control room. And he's playing into Charlie Parker's ears, new age music. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie Parker's private hell. Um, several years ago, there was a Saturday Night Live skit where, where Paul Simon got on an elevator and Lucifer turned out to be in the elevator. And it turned out that Paul Simon had been sent to hell and his hell was to listen to Muzak versions of his own songs for all eternity. So that's kind of like this, uh, Charlie Parker's private hell. I don't know whether you heard, but this past week, there's been a lot of controversy. I'm sorry that, that Green Bay lost last weekend, Patrick. Uh, but there's been some controversy about their quarterback's family and his relationship to the family. And this is a quote from Aaron Rodgers. Listen to this. I don't know how you can believe in a God who wants to condemn most of the planet to a fiery hell. What type of loving, sensitive, omnipresent, omnipotent being wants to condemn his beautiful creation to a fiery hell at the end of all this. It's caused a rift because his family believes more traditionally, apparently, than he. But we believe with Aaron Rodgers. We believe there are some passages from Scripture that would help Aaron Rodgers understand who God is and what he's like. So that Aaron Rodgers would be able to say, this is a loving, sensitive, omnipresent, omnipotent being who wants good for everyone. The problem is that there are going to be some people at the very end of all things. Who no matter what God does for them. No matter how good God has been. They would rather reign in hell than serve in heaven. What do you do with someone who at the end of all things does not want to serve? You know what you call a universe where there are people who are in service who don't want to serve? A universe where people have to serve eternally, but inside they don't want to serve, they want to be served. You know what you call that? You call it slavery. It's really hell. It's worse than we believe about hell. To think that there would be people who choose to be against God, but are forced to be obedient and serve God for all eternity. That would be torment. So what do you do with those people? We believe there's one passage in the New Testament that it's the quintessential passage explaining what happens at the very end of all things. When everyone's made his or her decision, and there are people who want God in their lives, and there are people who don't. It's found in Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 10 and following. It says, when the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, very symbolic passage, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. These are the wicked. These are the people who have chosen against God. They do not want to serve they are not going to be happy in a world without predatorism, without scavenging. They, they are like the sand of the seashore. And they came up, and listen to what they do. They came up on the broad plain of the earth and surround the camp of the saints, the beloved city. They surround New Jerusalem, and they are going to besiege it. And it says that fire came down like Sodom and Gomorrah from heaven and devoured them. Does that sound like wicked people are burned forever and ever and ever? No. They're devoured. They're devoured. God's not willing to let them suffer eternally. If you can bear it, this is euthanasia. People who would be miserable for all eternity in a world of love and service are actually put out of misery and they are devoured outside of the city walls. It says it like this a little further down. Then death and Hades, and we'll come to that at last Sabbath of February. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. 
And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. You know how your name is written in the book of life? You're born. You know how your name gets taken out of the book of life? You ask for it to be taken out of the book of life. It's like Moses saying, Lord, if you're not going to take the people of Israel into the land, then blot my name out too. You ask for your name to be taken out of the book of life. You say to God, I would not be happy serving. I would not be happy in heaven. And your name is taken out of the book of life. So these people are thrown into the lake of fire and they're done away. They become ashes under the soles of our feet. They are as though they had never been. And look at what the next verse says. They're done away. They're devoured. And then it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation 21. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away. And there's no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven out of God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice. Guess what word that is? It's megaphone. A loud voice proclaiming from the throne, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself will be among them and will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will no longer be any death. The former things are gone. No longer be any mourning or crying or pain. Does that sound like there's a place in the universe where there's a group of people being tormented forever and ever? There's no more mourning or crying or pain. That's the elimination of the wicked at the end. It's not something that God relishes to do. It's his strange act. It's not what God normally does. It's an unusual thing when God allows the destruction of the wicked. But he can't continue to let them be predators in a world where there are no predators. The very end of time, the Bible describes heaven as being a place where a lion lays down with a lamb. The nature of the predator has been changed. And the lion now does not want to devour the lamb. Predators and scavengers, which friends we all once were, have been changed into lamb-like beings. But for the lion that will not cease being a predator. For the tiger that will not cease devouring the weak. They will be done away. For their sake as much as for ours.